Hello, welcome to Candy Shop Yarns, where everything is sugar-free and high in fiber. I am Deborah, the owner of Candy Shop Yarns, and this is the ultimate destination for knitting and crochet enthusiasts. It is episode 26th, and it is February, oh, I didn't write it down, I believe it's February 18th, somewhere around there. Not really that critical, that important, but it's been a month. It has been a month since I've recorded, so I'm really happy to be back here. I was going to do this yesterday, but the um, sky was so overcast. There was no good light. <clears throat> so I decided I was just going to work on other projects instead. And then today I was going to record and it was gloomy again. So I was in the middle of eating a snack and the sun came out and I thought, I'm gonna stop what I'm doing and record. So I don't have everything perfectly prepared like I would like, but we're just gonna roll with it. I was eating, <clears throat> my throat's a little bit froggy. I was eating, I brought it over here to show you because it's so delicious. I had chips and this um, dip. I think that maybe, I don't know if it's just a Utah product. I know that it's produced here in Utah, um, but it is not dairy free and I need things to be dairy free. <clears throat> so I have a bit of a froggy throat, but I have to tell you a story. So first of all, this same, like the base that they use for this, that they add corn to, and then they top it with elote. Elote, no, elote is not the one that I was trying to think of. That is something different. Uh, what is it? Where is it here? Come here, Luna. Cotilla. That's what I was trying to think of. <laughs> Cheese. <laughs> I don't know why. Anyways, um, but without the corn and the cotilla cheese, um, it's a vegan product and it's really yummy. I have both, but I just couldn't resist this. It was so good. Here's my story I'm going to tell you. So when I have any dairy, like I can tolerate small amounts of certain types of cultured dairies. So some cheeses like cheddar cheese, Parmesan cheese, ones that are cultured longer, not yogurt, butter, um, mozzarella. Anyways, as long as I take this enzyme pill. So this is the pill. This is what I use. And the thing is that it has, um, it, it helps to break down lactase, protease, whatever. It says it on the bottom there. Wait, there we go. Okay, I'm not a doctor here, so this is not uh, medical information for anybody but me. But I take, I take this if I'm going to have some of that dairy, and it will help somewhat. <laughs> so last time I went to Disneyland with my family, um, I put some of these in a little tiny baggie and put it in my little, you know, like case that has other things in it, band-aids and other stuff. And I labeled it plant enzymes so that I know what it is. <laughs> well, I'm just going to tell you, they never look through bags very well. You think they do, but they don't. They just want you to unzip, open everything up and they shine their flashlight in, move on. So never ever even crossed my mind that this might be an issue <laughs> till the last time I went and they're really digging through my bag and opened up my little zipper pouch that has my band-aids all of my medications all that stuff and they pull out the baggie with these capsules that say plant enzymes <laughs> and they're like what is this because these look like like hand-packed capsules <laughs> and it says plant enzymes and now I'm flustered and so now that I'm flustered I'm just like my face is red and I can't think because I'm like oh no they think the worst <laughs> so so they're like what is this and I'm like it's 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 my pill so I can eat and they're like what it's for dairy it's for dairy and and then I I, I got out okay and they I finally got out 
it's so I can eat dairy. I can't eat dairy without it. But they, so they're taking it around to everybody. And they're like, do you know what plant enzymes are? This lady has this. Anyways, they were very, very suspicious. And finally, they let me go through. But as I was going through, I overheard them saying, good catch on that last one. I guess somebody before they had caught some things. So they were far more aware and watching out for it. But <laughs> I know better now that I'm going to copy this label and make it into a sticker and put it on the outside of my thing because I can't take this whole bottle with me. But <laughs> yeah, that was interesting. I thought they're not going to let me into Disneyland today or worse. Anyways. <laughs> okay, so I'm a little bit froggy and I have seasonal allergies, but we'll, we'll soldier on. What I'm wearing, look at this beautiful, beautiful, oh, so pretty scarf. This is the Mill Hollow scarf. Um, it's a pattern designed by my sister, Luna. <sighs> by my sister, Emily of Salt City Knits. And she knit this for my birthday. It is a single skein pattern for fingering weight yarn. Come here, girl. But she made this with one of her yarns that's a DK. And it is so soft and it is the palest hint of this peachy pink color. Oh, it's just so soft and squishy and luxurious. And it's perfect for me because it makes it a little bit bigger, I think. And I like the size a lot. So now I should put it back on because it was super cozy, but I'll never get it as perfect as I had it the first time. Let's see. Let's see if I can get this how I had it. Okay. It's lovely. So, oh, big news. So my sister Emily of Salt City Knits, she is also the owner of Yarn Brary Yarns, which has been closed for the last two, three years because of her health, she's reopening. And she has been dyeing a lot of yarn and will be ready to launch again soon. So I know that that will make many people happy to hear. Okay, let's see what has been going on. So giving a life update, finished projects, work in progress, um, shop news, just chit chat. There's no crochet today. This is all knitting today. So I would like to, I have a crochet project. Well, several, I've just been dying to start, but I've got to finish current projects. So let's get started. What has been going on the last month? Um, okay, so there are a lot of kind of bigger events in my household, specifically my birthday. Yes, it was my birthday right after, you know, like the next week, the following week after I recorded last time. So it's been a while as well as, well, it was just my anniversary right before that. Um, but we didn't really do much for either of those because my husband had injured his back and then I wasn't doing well. I had the weirdest thing happen. So I woke up, this was a a few weeks ago, I woke up on a Sunday, I was getting ready for church, I was blow drying my hair, and I was like, I'm really tired, like physically worn out, like I'm having a hard time blow drying my hair. And I just thought, well, I did wake up early and get right to it. So I'll just sit down for a minute. And I sat down. And when I sat down, I was like, I'm having a hard time, like holding my body up. I'm having a hard time holding my arms up and just staying upright. And so I thought, oh, well, I must have got, like, made myself dizzy, flipping my head upside down to blow dry my hair. So I just sat there for a little bit and then longer and longer until it was time to go to church. I went to church looking kind of a mess, but I needed to play the organ. And I sit on a bench to play the organ, and I'm not an organist. I play the piano on the organ, and if you play the organ, you'll know what I'm talking about. I don't play the organ, I play the piano on the organ. <laughs> so I don't know how to use the foot pedals. So, um, I mean, I've, 
I've been taught it, but I haven't practiced it. I even have the special organ shoes, but I haven't practiced enough because I have arthritis in my ankles and it really hurts to practice. So I just decided that doesn't, not important. So I have to keep my feet off of the foot pedals. And so there's a bench and it has a little kind of foot thing where I can like hook my heels in to hold my feet up off of the pedals so they don't make noise. But I have to, like I never thought about it until this day. Like it takes a lot of effort to sit upright on a bench, keep my legs up, keep my arms up and not fall off the bench. I was struggling to stay upright and stay on the, on the bench. So I went home from church and just sat there all day because I just, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't knit. I couldn't hold a book up. I just, sat there. I wasn't sleepy, but just physically worn out. But as I was sitting there, it was like I could feel like my body recharging. It was so it like my muscles recharging. And then the next day, that muscle issue was gone. But I had the strangest fatigue, like I always have fatigue. And I don't have to get into all that. But it was it was extreme for about seven days. So I have an appoint, had an appointment with my doctor and talked to my doctor and we're doing more test results. It's like trying to figure out all the tumblers in a lock. Like if you're trying to, un, if you're trying to pick a lock, you have to like figure out the first tumbler and the second tumbler, just trying to solve the mystery of what's going on. So anyways, working on that. That was weird. That was very concerning. So Hopefully we figure that out, but I'm back to my regular, regular fatigue, but it's okay. Back to what's been going on in life. Valentine's Day. I love Valentine's Day so much. I love it. I just, I love that it's a time to celebrate love, celebrate people that you care about. I know that for many people, it's only for significant others, but I think it's a good time to show love to all the people in your life that you care about. So. I had been working on gifts for my children, my grandchildren. Um, I did little photo books, like mini photo books that were spiral bound for my grandchildren. And I keep getting phone calls and videos and photos of her squealing in delight as she flips through the photos of her family. So that's, that's fun. I made a special dinner for my husband and I, and we watched a movie and it was really dumb. So. <laughs> but that's okay we spent time together and that's what we enjoy I had the, my trunk show at Pediforum Pearls and it went really well I was nervous feeling like I don't know feeling like who is going to come to a trunk show where it's all just featuring my shop I mean I don't I don't want to be um self-deprecating that's not really what it is it's it's like if i'm at a fiber festival people are coming to the festival but if they come to a trunk show it's specifically just to come see my stuff so i thought that's that's a, expecting a lot of a community do people really know me that well i was blown away blown away by the people that showed up it just really was very touching. I really appreciated all the people that came. Um, almost all of my knitting group came for my knit night and it was so sweet to see my friends, which helped you know me feel uh, more secure in social situations. It was lovely. Um, so if you are one of those that came, I mean, I'm not going to assume that you watch my podcast, but if you do and you came, I would love you to leave a comment telling me that you came. I, I It was just so much fun for me. My goal before I went was that I could help customers like that, that after they left, that they felt that they had a positive interaction, that they felt better about themselves when they left. But I couldn't fully communicate with all the customers because sometimes it was really crazy and sometimes like I don't know what to say I'm socially awkward so <laughs> I did my best but it was fun uh, on my patreon channel I did a video about getting ready for it a video of the event 
um, the setup there. So if you want, you could watch that. It was just really fun. And then my husband and I, we, I told my husband after we have spent a month and a half pretty much sitting on the couch with him recovering, me not doing well, I said, we have to get out of the house and do things. <laughs> we have to do something. <laughs> He says, okay, what do you want to do? I'm like, anything, let's get out of the house. So he's, he purchased tickets to go see Fiddler on the Roof at Hale Center Theater, which is a fabulous theater. They are so good. I've only seen one thing there where I was not blown away. Like they did a good job of even the one where I wasn't blown away, but it, they're all just wonderful. So we're going to do that next week. But I bought tickets last week to our local planetarium. When I was a teenager, I remember going and watching laser light shows in this dome theater to Led Zeppelin and Pink Floyd. It was so much fun, but that was when I was a teenager. And this is now a different planetarium, different location. And I thought, are they even gonna have that? And then I saw this ad pop up for this special event, one day only. Don't miss it. And they had like a 10 second video clip and it looked like it was something like that, but like more updated, you know, more advanced technology. Is that the, I'm, I'm trying to think of the word. So I'm like, sold, purchase the tickets. We went this last Saturday and found out they have two theaters, a dome theater and then an IMAX theater. And we were not in the dome theater. So I'm like, oh, okay, well, I hope it's still going to be good. And <laughs> it was not, <laughs> it was so bad. It was like watching a screensaver on your computer from the early 2000s where like, it's like this, uh, this image that will morph constantly, like this geometric shape that's constantly morphing with soundscape soundtrack that somebody created on their I mean you can do all sorts of amazing things on your computer but it was like Jay my husband said it was like somebody's high school project that that they managed to get people to buy tickets for well that's not even very nice because there's a lot of really 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 talented high schoolers that I'm sure could do amazing things way beyond this but we were not the first to leave early and we left 10 minutes in <laughs> We just sat there looking around and everybody else is kind of looking around like, we paid how much for this? So I'm sure a lot of people stuck it out because they're like, well, we paid for this on the parking and it was not cheap, so we're gonna stay. But Ms. and I are like, no, no, we're out of here. So <laughs> not just that, but I paid extra for, for premium seating and I show up and it's just sit wherever you can manage to find a seat. Yeah, so that was not... That was not cool. So learn my lesson. We walked out, found their ticket booth where they still, they do have a dome theater and they're still doing the Led Zeppelin and, and Pink Floyd laser light show. And it was starting 10 minutes later. I almost bought tickets and went to watch that. But I was like, I think I've wasted enough money today. Never mind. <laughs> but we did get out of the house and now we have a story to tell. I probably, oh, and tonight we might go roller skating. We'll see because, I mean, I my back is bad and I've been trying to recover from that. My husband's back is bad. He's trying to recover and I don't know if I dare. We'll see how we're doing tonight because I'm terrible at it, but I want to be a good, I want to be good at it. Come here. And my goal was in the winter to go roller skating. So we'll see. You gotta come sit here with me. Come on. Come on. Okay, let's get started with finished objects. I have a box here. Let's hope I can remember everything because like I said, I just jumped in and I didn't write down all my notes and everything. Okay, I showed these last time. Did I show these last time finished? Pretty sure I showed these last time finished. Oh, I love them so much. Scrappy projects are so fun. I like scrappy projects when they still have order to them. Like the colors go together 
or the socks match. I am not one for mismatched scrappy socks. Now I know that that is something other people really like. That's perfectly fine, but that's not my thing. Okay, I think I just stuck these in the box because they needed to be put away. All I did is grab a box that I've had sitting here for a month that have projects in it. Okay, here we go. Okay, I showed this last time one sock. I've blocked it. Look how lovely that is. You can't really see the sparkles. Are you gonna go out? Come on, let's see. Okay, yes. This is a project that I made from my Bon Bon Minis box, the winter, the winter set. I have a pile of things here. It's kind of ridiculous. So we'll see if I can get to it. There we go. Okay. I dyed up um, more of these boxes that I did a couple of years ago. This is the Winter Wonderland set. And so I had my own set from back when I originally did those and I knit up a sample and I did one sock and then I have finished the other, but this one's not blocked. So you can see the difference. But really, it's not that big of a deal. Just put it on your foot and it looks nice if it's not blocked. But I wanted it to be nice and smooth for the show that I was doing and for photos. But I've got both of them done. And I'll show you how much yarn I had left from that set. So there are five 10 gram mini skeins. This is what I have left of the five colors. Now this is the color that I used for the heel and the toe, and that uses more yarn than the stripes. And so knowing that, I even added in a little bit um, on the toe just to make sure I had enough. It's a good thing I did, because this is all I've got left of that. But I've got like one gram or less of each of these. Did I weigh them? It's not much, but I used um, just a random colorway that I had in my stash that I have since dyed up. I'll show that later, but anyways, for in between. So for the cuff and in between all of the stripes and they're so pretty. They're so pretty. I don't know why this makes me think of ice skating. No idea, but that's okay. It makes me think of that. So I've got that one done. And I think I've filled my sock knitting uh, need for a bit again. It used to be that I just couldn't get enough of sock knitting, but now it's all about the sweaters. So I like to have a sock on the go. I mean, I went to see the movie Wonka two times in this last month and neither time did I have a project to work on in the movie, which means I just fidget, I eat too much junk. So I really like to have a just sock to work on in or a stockinette hat to work on in the movies, but I didn't, I didn't have any. I still don't. We were talking about going to see a movie tonight, but there's really nothing to see so that we're interested in. Oh, but when I went to see Wonka, one of the times, um, my daughter Ella and Claire, they went and Ella had her baby, Owen. And since I'd already seen it and he was kind of fussy, I got to go walk up and down the hallway with him and play with him. And that was really fun, super fun. Okay. What else have I finished? I finished this fabulous hat. I mentioned before with another cowl that I had made 
that was a heart themed, Valentine's themed, not cowl, hat that I had made that one of the charts I really loved from Pacific Knit Co. from the Spring Doodle Deck pack. Um, I wanted to do an entire project with just that chart and that was this one. So I made that using my pink and red duo. I only have two of these left in the shop. Something looks funny with my screen. The lighting is looking worse. I hope it's okay. I can't do too much about that. I can't control the weather. Groundhog Day. Did you watch Groundhog Day? I love that. I love that movie. I also like to watch the extended version. Like if you have the DVDs, I know old school, but that's how we watched it. They have a commentary on it. One of the things they mentioned was that they wanted, uh, the idea was that um, the main character, he was reliving the same day over and over again, but for so long, they were talking about it being like a thousand years. I had no idea. I was thinking a year, but there's like, no, like a thousand years. Anyways, I was just thinking that where he says, I control the weather. It makes me laugh. <laughs> where? Anyways, so that's what I was thinking of. I can't control the weather. I'm not Bill Murray. Okay, this pom-pom is from Fab Units and it is fabulous. I was going to make, I still think I will, just because I want, I've been wanting to with the leftovers of this yarn. I've been wanting to make a pom-pom with a heart in it. I've been wanting to try pom-pom um, art. So I might still do that. And this is kind of floppy because um, one, the way the decreases ended up working with this, what I did is I just carried the stitches up and decreased um, in pattern, like with the color work. But because these columns of color work stitches were there, it ended up making it pointy. So I, I ended up decreasing faster at the very top and casting off before it was finished officially so that it would round it off a bit more. But that makes it more floppy. But also I didn't have a big button to put underneath it to stabilize it. If I have a button to hold it there, it'd be more like that instead of like that. Um, it's just a little bit too loose. So I would go down a needle size and I would have to, I think, decrease a little bit faster towards the very top if I did this exact same thing again. But if I did any other pattern, I wouldn't need to. It was just because of those one by one um, color work stitches that it pulls it in differently. But I think it's so cute, super cute. Next finished project. I shared this last time, but it wasn't done yet. Was it done yet? No, I can't remember anything. Wait, let me look. It was done, this one. Still super cute. Yes, that was done. Okay, that was all my finished projects then. I just have a box of shop samples here. So this leads me, I'm going to pull all these out because that's actually helpful to have all these here. This fin this brings me to my works in progress. And, oh, okay. Um, let's start with, I only have two. I mean, I have three, but I'm not working on my dad's gloves and I feel really awful because my dad needs gloves and I just haven't had the time. I feel so bad. I've been going through deadlines of things and trying to plan out how much I need to get done of each project each day in order to finish them in time. And I don't know if I'll get done in time with one of them. So I had to set that one aside. Sorry, Dad. I know my dad actually watches sometimes like life updates and my mom sometimes watches all of it. So hi mom. <laughs> Would you let dad know? I'm sorry. I'll tell him. <laughs> okay. 
This is one of the projects with a deadline. This is a test knit for Pacific Knit Co. Their baking doodle cowl. And look at how cute this is. I added clips on the bottom because it's a provisional cast on and it wants to flip up so you can't really see it. So I added these clips to try to help pull it down so you could see that. But what I'm doing with this, this is DK weight yarn. Um, there are a lot of charts to pick from. Oh, now Luna's ready. That's what happens. Okay, there's a lot of charts to pick from and you can pick one and just repeat that again and again. You can do it all in just two colors. You can do every chart and make it extra long. You can do it with fingering weight. You can do it with sport weight. You can do it with DK weight, um, worsted weight. You could do, this one I'm doing is the infinity cowl, which means that it's two layers and then I will knit it long and then join it in a loop. But then you could do a single sided one where it is one layer and it's open like this and it goes over your head this direction like this would be done. It would just need ribbing if I did the single sided. I've done a single sided one, um, but I'm doing the infinity one this time for this test knit. And I decided to do kind of a theme where there, with this baking doodle um, test knit, she has things like a kitchen stand mixer, like a KitchenAid kind of thing, retro looking oven mitts, a whisk, measuring spoon, no, mixing bowls, um, piping bags. I'm trying to think of all the different things eggs, like you crack eggs. And then there's all these baked goods like pie and cupcakes and cake and donuts and um, Swiss rolls and all these different things. And then there's also these things that are like icing, piped icing um, borders. So I am doing a piped icing border every other time with a baked good in between every other time. So I'm not doing any of the like baking tool kind of things like oven mitts and all that stuff. It's all based on the treats because that's perfect for candy shop yarns. And I love these colors. So these are my candy kisses colorways. This is butterfly PT. Have any of you ever tried that? It's this tea where it, if you add lemon, I'm trying to remember, it, it reacts and turns this color and it's really pretty. Um, then I'm using sugar and spice. And then I'm using Jawbreaker, which has just these fun speckles. Dream House, which is like a Barbie pink colorway. Kenneth, which is the Ken version and Skyberry Pop. So those are the colors that I am using. I was wanting to add in a yellow, but I didn't have any dyed. And so I thought, well, I'll just get started and see. And actually now I'm really glad. I really like it like this. Yellow would be cute in it, but I think this is perfect. So I'm very happy with that. So I'm almost halfway done with that test knit. And um, she has a lot more coming up. I've seen a couple of them that look really fun. Oh, there's one I'm really excited for. I'll definitely be test knitting that one. I mean, I don't have to test knit them. I can knit them anytime. But I do enjoy being in the test knit groups. It's kind of a fun community chat. It's just fun. Okay, so that's one project. And with that, I wanted to kind of show you my, uh, just a few things of color work. And that's why I was glad I had them in the box here because then I had more examples. I wanted to show you one of my early color work. Well, early-ish. I didn't bring my earliest one out. 
um, which was a cardigan that I had made. But this is one of my early ones. This is the It's a Small World Cowl by Tannis Gray. I love this one. Emily, my sister, actually had knit one for me also um, with navy blue and a purpley pink background. And so that's a fun, it's fun to have um, options for it. But I can see like how much it pulls in here and flares out on top, which happens a lot when things are more heavily, when there's more stranded knitting down here than up here that tends to happen. But I still think that I did pretty good with my tension. You can see where I've caught floats here and there. But I think I've done, I did pretty good. This is one of my earlier ones, but after blocking, you know, that does help a lot of things. Okay, so that's one of them. This is the first test knit that I did for Pacific Knit Co. And this is the single-sided one, not an infinity cowl, so it's like that. I've shared that on here not too long ago. Um, right here, this was one that it was really hard to get the tension correct, especially because there was three colors. But after blocking, like, cause it was looking quite puckered, but after blocking and not aggressive blocking, gentle blocking, it looks nice. But this one was really tricky. It was frustrating. It required all of my attention. I couldn't start and stop. It was so, I just had to focus intensely on this chart when I was working on it. And then after that, it made everything else seem pretty darn easy. Um, and then I did this cowl with fingering weight yarn and my tension is much better with fingering weight, I can see then with DK weight, it's all very nice and smooth and tidy. That's upside down. This one, my tension wasn't quite as good, but I've noticed when you do one by one, like when you're alternating colors every other time, it tends to change the tension more than when you have multiple stitches. When it, especially like if it, if they stack on top of each other, that happens. So right here, this where they're lines and they stack on top of each other, that's, that's a different tension than right above it. And then this one, my tension turned out really, really good. I think this is where I really got it. So just practicing just makes a lot of difference. So with, now that I am to this one, I mean, it hasn't been blocked, but it's looking really good. And this chart with three colors and this chart with three colors like this one it didn't even bother me didn't even phase me i didn't have to even think too hard about it this one was harder everything lines up in columns and so it does pucker more especially because there are long floats here that were really hard to catch because you're working with more colors but because it's going to be enclosed i didn't really have to worry about catching the floats other than not catching floats, actually increases the puckering. Um, when you catch floats, I think that it reduces the puckering. I did catch them after I sewed on sprinkles, but that was after the fact. So I think my color work has definitely improved and now it doesn't stress me. I just really enjoy it. Like before it was like, okay, here we go. There's something I want to make, but it's color work. So I'm really gonna have to, you know, soldier on, like work through this, but now it's just, I enjoy it. But that is anything that you do, you have to practice. And the more you practice, the better you get and it's more enjoyable. So I've really had fun with those, but none of this is mindless knitting that I can just take with me easily. So I just have to focus on the projects that are needing to be done right now and not start anything else. 
So I won't be starting any mindless projects. I mean, it'd be good to have one to take on the go, but then when I'm at home, I'll be tempted to work on that instead of what needs to be done. So here's the other project that, this is the one that I'm like, I really need to focus on this one. I started this one almost two weeks ago. This was from my Make Nine list. La Prairie by Hohi Locatelli. It is a fingering weight cardigan and it uses five colors that you fade. Um, and I'm using five colorways from my Mermaid Kingdom collection. I am using Seaside Sunset. Then I'm going into Pearl of the Sea. I showed this last time because I went over my Make Nine stuff. Then I'm going into, um, I always have the hardest time. I don't know why. Ocean Odyssey. Trying to get the name of that one. Like I know it, but it's, anyways, Ocean Odyssey. The lighting is so funny. And then, okay, from there into this one, which is, no, this one's Seabed Sparkle. This is Pearl of the Sea. And that's the next one. And then the last one is Siren Song. So I did my gauge swatch and I measured it and it was off. And then I was looking to see the next needle size that I needed to try and I didn't have it. So I was going to have to order it. And then I thought I need to swatch it in pattern. And I started swatching in pattern and I was so frustrated and I thought I'm gonna hate this pattern because just doing this swatch is just hurting my brain. And I decided, you know what? If the swatch is that hard, I'm going to cast on and put the effort into the project. And if my gauge is off after a bit, then I will rip it out. This isn't the project for me. We'll just, I may hate doing the whole thing. So I cast on and it was easier in the longer row. It took me a little while to get it going and to get in the rhythm of it. And it, each row was slow going. But after a little bit, I got into a rhythm and I really, really enjoy it. And my gauge is spot on, so nice. This is where I am. Here's the back. Okay, here's the upper back so far. I've done the first color, faded into the second color, and just started the third color when it was time to stop and turn my work and pick up stitches to do the front. So I'm doing the front right side first, and then I'll do this side. But I have to pay attention to every row there is patterning. There's no rest rows. So every row has patterning and every other row has moving stitches or one over one cables. So, and lots of them. And then every, I don't know, nine, ninth or 10th row, there are these baubles. And these baubles take a good amount of time. I've timed myself and each one takes me two minutes and 15 seconds to make. So when I go across this row, and this is not including the other stitches, how many do I have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 baubles on one row. That is 22 minutes, not including the 15 seconds. So that is 22, 23, 24, about 25 minutes for that one row, not including the rest of the stitches. So that's a lot. <laughs> So I have to pay attention to what row of the chart am I on? Um, and every row is, you know, it's like a 20 row repeat. So it's not like it's gonna stick in my head as easily. And then I have to pay attention to, am I fading yet? And what part of the fade am I on? So there's a lot to focus on, but surprisingly, it makes it more enjoyable. I really thought that I was going to hate this after I just was trying the swatch, <laughs> but I love it. I really am enjoying it. I really am enjoying this. So in the pattern, 
and Hohi Locatelli, she does a lot of these same kinds of patterns where it's like a, a drop sleeve design and then boxy here and then tight down the arms. I can't say that I love the really tight though, especially for a cardigan because I'm going to wear something underneath it. I don't want to struggle to get my sleeve in there and then feel like it's all bunched up. So I went through and I figured out the math for doing the sleeve, not the neck size up, which would have been a little too much, but in between the two. So um, I just knit it a little bit farther and I will do the same thing on the front and I figured out how many stitches I need to pick up and how much more I need to decrease by the end. Um, and for somebody who really is not good at math, I still managed to figure that out. So I'm pretty confident that most people could do that if you're familiar at all with um, knitting. Like, I, I'm, not, I'm not one that does a million sweaters and can design my own. And I don't even know that I can adapt many. But this one is like just rectangles. So that's pretty simple. So this is where I've got to do a certain amount every single day. And my goal is today to do this much here on this side and then next week to get the other side done. And then now I can join under the sleeves. Okay, so that's all of my projects that I'm working on. I had a friend in my knitting group ask um, if any of us had any neon scraps left for something that she was working on. So I went to look through my scrap basket that I showed you before here. And I was looking through, I'm like, oh, that's not quite neon, that's not quite neon, but it's a cute color. Oh, that's a cute color. And I started pulling things out. Next thing you know, I've got a pile of minis in here. I did find some neons for her. Now that one is a neon and this one is a neon, but I'm going to be using those two. But I had two others for her that were bigger. But I was like, these are so cute together. These are just screaming scre uh, spring and that they need to be a project together. So I was trying to decide what I was going to do with this, but I think I'm going to knit a sweater where I use these and hold them together with a strand of Surrey alpaca and that will kind of blend the whole thing together and it'll even soften this a lot more, which I think these colors as is would be beautiful, but it would really also be gorgeous softened a bit with um, a strand of Surrey alpaca that's just a, a bare, like undyed. Um, so that's something that I want to work on later on but I also have a crochet cardigan for my Make 9 that I want to cast on after I finish my cardigan from the Hohi Locatelli one. The reason why I'm that one, I, like I figured out how much I have to do each day trying to get it ready in time. The in time is I want it to be a shop sample for the next Fiber Festival that I am doing in April. And if you have followed me for any length of time, you know that I am the slowest sweater knitter of all time. I have, like, they take me six months, a year even, and this one I wanted to do in a month and a half, two months. And it's fingering weight, not DK. It's heavily patterned with bobbles. Like, it's a cardigan, so it's not just around and around and around stocking it. So maybe I've been a bit too ambitious, but it's one that I really, really want. It's one that I've been wanting to do for a while. And I decided, well, the time will pass with me having worked on it or the time will pass with me not having worked on it. Which one would be better? I would rather have worked on it. So maybe it won't get done in time for the Fiber Festival. Fingers crossed it does, but even if it doesn't, I still just want the project, so so it's good either way. All right, that's all of my projects that I have been working on, so now let's do some shop news. 
the first thing is I wanted to show um, the box from January. So I started a um, mystery minis club. I'd say subscription, but you have to go in and purchase it each month. And so it's one, I mean, it's a club in the sense that I'm doing it once a month, but you can choose which ones you want to do. So Jan, it, the theme is Enchanted Nostalgia. And that's the overall theme for the whole year, but each month will have its own theme within that. So January's was fairy tale fantasy. And I wanted to show you that box. So um, this is how it comes, except for it'll have a label and it's, it's closed up. Ooh. Okay, let me show you what's in here. I have my own here. So I have it on my simple syrup base, which is 80% um, superwash merino, 20% nylon, and 80 yards per 20 gram mini skein. And each month there will be a postcard that is the inspiration for the colors, and you'll get that postcard. And so I just couldn't decide between these two, so I used them both. <laughs> I just think they're just so pretty. The colors were so pretty. The theming, the whole thing was just oh, with the roses. I just loved it. Love it, love it. And they are like legit postcards. I don't know why this will not, there we go. Um, so the colors came from these. So here are the colors. I did not name them individually. I actually have given them names myself, but decided I'm not going to label them all. It, it's not necessary. <laughs> so I wanted to show you where the inspiration came from for these. So first of all, we have this one. I love the roses. There we go. And so this is from the roses. And then from this same postcard, the landscape, I love the golden tan colors here and then the greens of the countryside there. And so that's what we've got there are some golds don't focus on my face, focus on the yard, focus on the yard. There we go. That's better. Okay, and then from this postcard, we've got, I loved her hair and her lips and the blush on her cheeks and the dress, uh, those colors. So that's what I picked to use for these colors. We've got kind of some coppery colors, some rose, some uh, like kind of mauve purpley. Oh, this is one of my favorites. I actually, I just love this colorway. Sometimes things don't transfer exactly the same from minis to full skeins. I wanna see how this one looks on a full skein. And then, from the background here, I loved these colors right here. And so that's where this comes in. And then up here and, and around with butterflies and other elements, we've got this skein. So that's where those colors came from. So for those who have ordered these, I'm starting a year-long make-along where you make anything with these. Um, and then you can use the hashtag Enchanted Nostalgia Mal for make-along to be entered to win prizes. And I will um, go in, I haven't done that yet I'm, because these have just gone out. So um, I'll have to pull some prizes for that, but 
I'm trying to decide if I want to do something with each month individually or collectively, like a year long thing where it's one big project. They won't necessarily all go together across all of them because they're very different themes. Like this next month, it's gonna be vastly different from this. So I haven't decided yet exactly what I'm going to make with mine, but I have collected a lot of ideas. <laughs> I'd love to hear what you would do. Cause I mean, socks are fun, but I kind of want to do something that you'd see more. So something, sweater, cardigan, cowl, something like that. And I'm really excited for February's. I've hired an artist to create something special for this one. I'm really looking forward to, and the theme is Saturday morning cartoons. So from our childhood, but of course I'm going to pick from my childhood. So you can expect, you know, strawberry shortcake, my little pony, care bears, that kind of thing. So, and those kinds of colors. So I, I don't know these, I mean, at the time I'm recording, there's only one of these left. I had three extra. It might be gone before this goes up. And then February's, I think I have six left. So at the time of recording, but I'm really, really having fun creating these. Okay. So after the fiber festival, I, I died a lot because you don't ever want to sell out. You always want to have plenty. You want the last people that come to feel that there's still an abundance for them to choose from. So I make sure to dye plenty which means then I come home with plenty and then I can um, stock my shop with all the things that did not sell. And you will be very happy to see some of the things that I have left that I have gone through and I've put some of them in my shop right now. And then I'm, I'm hoping by the time this video goes up, everything else will also be in the shop. So all of the Bon Bon mini boxes, um, are in the shop right now that I have available. The French Kiss one. Oh, I wanna make a pair of socks with these two. Too many things to make. And the Winter Wonderland, which I showed you earlier. So I have those. I only have two of these red and pink duos left that I did that hat with. This would also make a super cute cowl or you could do socks, you could, um, put it together and use it in with other colors if you want in a sweater. But those were really a big hit. And then I've got these duos. These are 250 gram skeins of fingering weight sock yarn. Um, and it is in, this is the colorway that I used in my Winter Wonderland sock. And it is called Pretty as a Picture. So I've dyed that and then a bear because that is just a pretty combination. So you could use that to make um, a pair of socks because it's 100 grams total or all sorts of things. So I have some of those. And then this is what I know you'll be really happy about. I have some of these left. I've got six, six of these left, these sock sets. And not only that, but not sock sets, but also individual skeins. These little cakes of yarn, sweet cakes. This one is Malibu Beach. So those were very popular. Number one, because I mean, the packaging is adorable. So they're perfect for gifts, but they also just look cute. Like we know that we, I have a stash and things sit there. But if they can sit there looking adorable until I use it, even better. If it can be a perfect gift, great. But also it's pre-wound and ready to go. So I have some of those. And then these adorable mini skeins. Okay. Let me show you. I love these so much. <laughs> they are... 20 gram, they're my gumball mini skeins, but they are in a little, oh, you can't even see, a little ice cream dessert cup, a mini one. You can see it's got this little swoop here. 
like perfect for one scoop of ice cream with a cherry on top and some sprinkles or something um, or sorbet or if you want to do some other little dessert a mousse or something but I filled it with yarn so how cute is that for a gift but even that having these all lined up how cute and then if you have those and you have like a set that you purchased and then after you've used the yarn then you can use the cups for a little tea party I love it they're just so cute and once again pre-wound so I was trying to decide like what kind of color palette do I want to see like what would be fun and I just thought fun bright colors okay here we go Let's see I can't get them all but I mean they look so happy together so I have got quite a few of these now my biggest challenge is like how am I gonna ship these I found boxes and I can I can ship them so that's good okay the challenge is also getting those on the website I need to get those up listed and then this was the the unexpected big hit at the fiber festival and I don't have a ton of it left but I'm going to be dying more of these so it's these texture duos it's a skein of my fingering weight boucle slub and a skein of mohair in a coordinating colorway and I've just twisted them together so when you untwist it it's two separate skeins and the idea is that you can hold them together in a project to get like an approximate DK weight for a sweater because that's what I did I did that with this or you can use them individually and alternate them like the birds of a feather shawl these are fingering weight skein alternated with sections of mohair and doing a project like that would be really pretty so i've got um a few of these unicorn dew these are both the same colorway the mohair and the base um the the mohair the boucle slub but then the other ones are different colorways i guess i i don't have one of the other one that was oh that was the first to sell that's right but these are fun and Emily, my sister got one to design something with. So I'm excited to see what she makes with it. But I have, I have several things I wanna make with these. Once again, time is the issue. So that was fun in person to see what people are excited about. So I know what to offer, but also some things are better in person. Like you can't, there's no way you can translate just the scrumptious fluffiness of this over a photo versus in person holding it. So everybody that walked in immediately had to pick one of these up and squish it. Like that was a thing I noticed first thing. So that was fun to see. I think that's all the shop news for now. So this has been long enough and the light has fluctuated dramatically throughout all of this so I think it's time to end <laughs> so I hope you have a really great day please tell me a bit about what you're working on I would love to hear about your projects I love your comments oh, I have been terrible the last two months in replying oh, I'm sorry about that I have I have read all of the comments I love them all but I've not been able to respond to every one of them I was really good about that for a while, about getting in there regularly, but it I've been really overwhelmed the last couple of months. So I'll be getting back at it. I'm back to dyeing yarn next week to get ready for the next fiber festival and for the club that I'm doing. And I just have a lot of things I wanna restock. The candy kisses. And there's just so many things I wanna do. So I gotta get back at it. So thank you for watching and spending time with me today and I look forward to seeing you again next time. Bye.